All right, we are here, here with Willie Cully Stein, aka Trill. Trill, thank you for being here. Oh man, I appreciate you having me, bro. That's fun. Fun. Um, I think a cool place to start with is just you touching on where your nickname Trill came from. Oh, uh, let's see. It was probably like my sophomore year of college. Um, me and uh, uh, like my friend group, uh, we were making music out of a closet, man. And uh, I don't even know how it happened. Just one day, um, I came on a song and was just like, Trill Will. And then after that, all my friends was just like, Trill, Trill. I was like, damn, that's a dope nickname. And I always wanted a nickname. So. Okay. Like when I was in junior high to high school, it, it was always just Willie, you know what I mean? And I always wanted a nickname. And uh, I, I moved to a different school. And I even, I was a big Friday Night Lights fan. So when I moved to a different school, um, you know, first day of uh, football practice, you put your little name on your t on the tape, you put it on the top of your head. Right so on the tape. Yeah. Yeah. So I put Booby on it because Booby Miles, right? I'm like, damn, I want people to call me Booby. <laughs> And it never stuck, yeah, obviously. It never stuck. Um, but then from that point, I was just like, damn, man, I really want a nickname. And then a couple years later, dude. And there it true. is. Stuck with you. Yeah. yeah. All right, let, let, let's take a step back a little bit. Can you can you just kind of tell me and, and everybody listening where you grew up, what childhood was like, and, and basically um, what a young trail looked like, what his life was all about? Yeah, okay, so I... I was born in Dodge City, Kansas. Um, grew up from like kindergarten to sophomore year in uh, Spirigo, Kansas, which is like 15 minutes away from there. Um, yeah, a simple life, man. Country. Um, played all the sports you can get into um, from, you know, Soccer, to football, basketball, baseball. Um, baseball was like probably the main sport in our town. Like mm -hmm. the the rec, the rec league was big in baseball. Like really, the rec league only had baseball. Um, you had to travel to play basketball or football to Dodge City, and so like baseball was like probably the probably honestly the first sport that I ever really played play was baseball. And yeah, I man, just oh, and the pool was big. Like the pool was a big thing in my little town. Like if you went, you were cool if you went to the pool every day. So I was trying to clock in from as soon as it opened to as soon as it closed. I was at the pool, um, doing tricks, flirting with the lifeguard. And just, you were gonna pull a sandlot move, dude. It was a sandlot move. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> nah, man, I, I was too good at swimming, bro. I couldn't do that. How's a seven footer swimming? I mean, I wasn't seven foot at that time, but you know, it was I was a I was a good swimmer, man. So uh, I lived at the pool. I was a lake baby. Grew up at the lake. You know, I love water sports. So um, yeah, man. Between summers of hanging out at the pool to playing baseball, um, I didn't start travel basketball until probably like fifth or sixth grade I started in AYB and then AAU started for me uh going into my sophomore year uh well yeah that summer going into my junior year so when I really started when I uh, I think I was 15 yeah 15 going on 16 is when I started like really really playing in a high level of basketball yeah um but dude, I mean, just like summer weights. I just remember the summers out there. Um, they were just a blast, dude. Just hanging out at the park with you know friends and simple man. Just like whatever, whatever you can get into in that little country town. I mean, it was like I think 800 people there at the time. So oh, we're talking yes. really small. Yeah, small community. Oh. Um, you know, everybody. I mean, having dinners at everybody's houses is just. It was a real small community, but man, I loved it. Uh, it was a good way to, to get brought up for sure. 
Um, so when we talk about your podcast of, you know, having a dream and chasing it, I think it was somebody else's dream. Not really mine, you know what I mean? Like, I always wanted to be, like, I wanted to be a D1 quarterback so bad. And, and so to 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 a intent of – I'm not – like going into my freshman year, I, I'm coming off of an awesome year of football, my eighth grade year. And, you know, I finally got to start quarterback. It's what I always wanted to play. And I had a fun season, dude. I, I mean, it was it was a good time. And uh, I go into, you know, freshman year, end up starting varsity at wide receiver, JV quarterback. So I'm playing two games a week, and it was awesome because I'm like, here, I'm a starter as a freshman. I'm looking forward to the JV game because that's when I get to really get down, right? And so going into my uh, freshman year of basketball, and we had just got this, you know, younger, new coach in. He's supposed to be like, I mean, a really good and intense coach. And I'm like, man, I'm looking at my grandparents. I grew up with my grandparents. And I'm like, I don't think I'm going to play basketball. And they're like, what? And I'm like talking to like my friends and his dad. Uh, it was a big big influence on me his name was louis conrad and uh i'm like yeah i'm not gonna play and they're like mad they're like why why wouldn't you play like it's a town of 800 you know we probably got 15 kids out like why wouldn't you yeah. why wouldn't you just come play and i'm just like man i'm just gonna work on i'm gonna go to a bunch of football camps and just work on uh becoming a quarterback and uh about a week later they freaking talked me into going to a camp. I went to the camp and the coach was like, man, I, we heard, you know, I heard that you was a, a one man press break in, in junior high. I played point guard in junior high. And I was like, the only thing is we weren't that good. So it wasn't really fun for me because I was just getting boxing one and it was just like too much. Right. I just didn't have any fun with it. And so I like getting the freshman year and, uh, Coach was just awesome. His name's uh, Jerry Stanford. And he was just a good coach, man. He was, like, the first – one of the first coaches that I had that, like, you know, you get a coach and he, like, changes your life. Yep. And there's all, multiple coaches on the way. He was probably the first one. Well, second one. The first one was named uh, Donnie Peak. And one of my – he was my best friend's dad, and he coached us in football and MAYB basketball. But he kind of got me to that level of where I was. And this next guy, he's, like – He's about to get me to this college level, right? Bunch of getting a bunch of mail in and all this stuff. But it was like, like I said, it was somebody else's dream. Like for me, I was living like I mean, going to rodeos and going to like this thing called Dodge City Days. That was like the hypest thing for us. Like once a year is a big, you know, festival. I'm like, bro, like I'm thinking like everybody else coming from, I'm going to end up being a farmer out here or something like fucking really no, wheat. that's, that's Cut. what you thought your your life would be like i mean bro, I, I i honestly i didn't i never i never even thought about being in the nba or is that because never. because you were from such like a, a small hometown like you didn't know what that life could look like never even seen though the the, the most biggest basketball i've ever seen out there was the Dodge city legends which was like a semi-pro team yeah and I remember them like winning like 2002 or 2003 or something and like going to the parade. And it was like, that was, I mean, I was like a ball boy with them and stuff. So that was like the highest level I've ever seen. I've never been to a college game. Wow. I was like the highest level I've ever seen, but it was cool. You know what I mean? It was like a cool experience to see. And like, that was like pros for us. And then they left. Um, the, the team never got brought back, but it's a, I mean, by the time I got to junior high and high school, like we didn't have anything out there. There was no, we didn't watch NBA. We didn't, you know, college was like the biggest, I think, you know, it was going, but I thought I was going to play college football. There was no, yeah. wasn't basketball, wasn't in the sights with it. Like I, n I never thought I could even, you know, touch what I did um, until that coach, uh, Coach Stanford got there. And then, you know, he was like, by your by your junior year you're gonna have every coach in this little ass gym watching you play and i'm just like sounds good you know what i mean like, sounds good yeah, we wow. get to it we got 
USC flying into this little ass airport to come watch a, a like a, a pickup. I mean, we call them like uh, open gyms on Sundays, man. And like, I just remember just like, you know, Missouri being there, uh, just a bunch of bunch, o, OU, man, Oklahoma State. They're all just like in this little ass gym of ours, no air conditioning. And I'm just like, yeah. And I haven't even, I haven't even scratched not even the bottom of the surface of you know what I ended up being like today wow. uh, like s- skill level talk about you know like baby giraffe but like I was athletic but the skill wasn't you know what I mean it was just like you can they tell just he's gonna, like a big ceiling with you just that's it that's only th- that's literally the only thing that could to see honestly just like what he could be because I was just so athletic man I had to play point guard so my my ball handling at being at that point, I grew like seven inches from freshman year or from eighth grade to freshman year. So it was like, man, now this kid's six nine, doesn't have any hair on his face. Like, who, who knows what he's gonna be like? You know what I mean? If he fills out, like, what's gonna happen? So there was just like a big, I mean, there was no top to 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 the bottom, and there was no cap. So it was like, whatever this kid, whoever gets their hands on this kid is. That's the bigger question. Whoever gets their hands on this kid, is, it could get scary for them, you know. So, end up going to play in a camp, um, K State. Mm-hmm. When played at a K State camp, uh, my freshman year, our new coach had, took us out there, um, took us like two vans and just we went out there for a team camp. And that's that's when it changed. Like that moment right there was the, probably the most pivotal moment of my basketball career, just because we get there and I meet a guy named uh, uh, oh man, it's it's it's, it's Lucas Lucas something like it's either his last name is Lucas or I I can't believe I I just forget that it was a blank because. Uh, I met th- I met this guy, man. It was just like we call him Coach Lucas. Met him, and uh, that was like I played against their best player, their other uh, 15, 16 group for their AAU team. He had played uh, at St. James Academy, and I, I dropped like twenty five and ten. And he was like, oh, "We need to get that kid." And so after the game, he's like talking. I mean, I, this is the first time I've ever been out of where I'm at, right? So I'm like in this, you know, you know bigger city. This is Manhattan, but to me, this is like a big little city, right? So I ain't never really been anywhere else. And uh, so I'm talking to this guy, and he's just like, "Yeah, I man, we, you know, we want you to come play with us. Like, you know, you would come every weekend and practice and all So it was just like some like super overwhelming, and I'm like. Uh, yeah, and, and maybe, you know, I mean, I have to talk to my, my grandparents about it. That was like the second team. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, had, I, I had like, a, that was like the second team. There's another uh, team called uh, Pump and Run uh, in the city. And they had been trying to get me to come up there for like, you know, a couple of years. And I was just like, I was just so scared to make that move from growing up to where I was. Like, I was just like, nah, I'm not ready. You know? I'm cool with playing baseball in the summer and like going to the pool, you know what I mean? Like, I'm cool, man. And uh, so I don't know that something it was the path, man. I don't know some some inner force, you know. I was like, I'm ready, I guess. Um, yeah. Let's let's make the move. So I tell my grandparents about it. We got to talking. Um, Coach Lucas brought in his uh, ends up being you know one of the family at this point, uh, Matt Suter, and these guys are running this AAU program called. Uh, Speece Melkan at the time, and uh, Speece is like a a team from Indiana, so it was like a branch off of them in Kansas and um, Missouri. So ended up playing with them, uh, and, and, play, and like play with uh, Clint actually moved up, um, and uh, that was a kid that I played with us uh, at St. James against to get on that team. He ended up moving up, so then it was like me as a big, and uh, I, that's where I met Siobhan Shields at. And um, so I was living with Coach Lucas for like two weeks, hmm. and uh, it was just like weird, you know what I mean? Like, I just met this guy a couple weeks now ago. Now you're living with him, everything's all new. Yeah, I'm away from my family, you know, I left my friends. Like, it was like, man, this is my summer now. 
I'm, you know, playing basketball and sleeping on, you know, this couch and this other dude's house that I you know, it, barely know. This is honestly straight like from a movie. Dude, no, this could, this is this bro, it's movie like for real, movie like. So, have you seen that Adam Sandler movie? Um, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Finding somebody from a small town that nobody ever knows about. I mean, it's not like your typical five star recruit that the name's everywhere. This is a no, a guy from yeah. nowhere with nowhere, no one name that literally has all the potential in the world. Diamond in the rough, dude. Diamond in the rough. Diamond in the wheat in this situation. Diamond yeah. in the wheat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. So I'm living there for like two weeks. And uh, it, it was just funny. One day, uh, my teammate, Siobhan, uh, I guess he had talked to his mom. was like, yo, he's living with Coach Lucas. And like, Coach Lucas was intense. So, you know, like there was you know, kind of a barrier between the kids, the moms, and the coaches. And so I think his mom, Senya Shields, kind of felt bad that I was like you know I had to go back with coach Lucas and not like be around other kids so she was like how about you stay with us for the rest of the summer and uh like I was like hell yeah you know what I mean like new you know kids and she had three kids at the time so like it was just like yeah no I love to come stay with you guys so then I, you know, I ended up staying with them it, it bro it was like I don't know it was just great like I got a new family um, brothers and sisters and uh so i go back to school had a rough the, so the school system that i went to the skills were like one grade higher so if you got a a, a a c anywhere else that was a d mm. at that school right so i had a bunch of d's man never flunked but my my, my gpa was low yeah. So now I'm getting all these schools calling me, calling me, blah, 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 blah. But my GPA is not matching that. So now soon we're sitting at this uh, field house. They can go up in the top of this little little meeting room. And it's like my grandparents, Senior Shields, Will Shields. And I don't know if you know Will Shields, but freaking Hall of Famer football player for the Chiefs, 14 seasons, probably like accolades from when he went to the back like something this, this is the guy right here yeah. this is you know what i mean and so super quiet man just super intelligent man intimidating he's just sitting there you know and i kind of come up i'm like damn am i in trouble <laughs> you know what i mean like it was just the it was eerie in there because uh -oh. you know, yeah i'm like well what's going on and they're like you know if you really want to like do this play college basketball you're gonna have to uh, make some changes and uh we want you to come live with us. We would have to become your legal guardians and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. So this is me going into my junior year, sophomore summer. And uh, it was just like, my grandmother's like, yeah, you gotta do it. My mom was a little hesitant on it. She's like, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. But my grandma, like I said, bro, it's divine. You know what I mean? Like, nah, you gotta do it. So I ended up moving with them and it was like the hardest, talk about the hardest thing. It was like, I went to college three years earlier. Oh, you know what I mean? it was like, I'm leaving home. I'm leaving friends. I didn't tell my friends yet. Cause I didn't know how to tell them that I'm not being y'all graduating class. Like, and that's like a big thing in that small town. Man. Yeah. You know, such a yeah. Small, like you grew up with, like, I knew the same kids from preschool to such, you know, I, like a some of them are still there, you know? Yeah. You're like brother and sister pretty much. You know what yeah. I mean? And so, like, I, I hadn't tell, like, my best friends that I was moving until, like, a week before I actually had to move. And it was weird, man. But I get there. And, like, the so the structure difference. This is what, like, changed a lot of it. The structure difference was just crazy. Like, getting grounded for grades and, like, curfews. And, damn, bro, I didn't have that. Bro. The doors were unlocked. You know what I mean? We couldn't leave any time we wanted. Like, it was just a, just a completely culture shock. But um, being in that help me in the long run um with uh, like having I had, I had tutors once a week i had to retake like two classes online so my other kids are like you know having fun summer man i'm freaking doing summer school as a sophomore um and going to play basketball at the same time so i really didn't have any free time as a kid um where i was so previously used to playing baseball and going to the pool and doing kind of whatever it was just like you know super 
and not like structured and how to make sacrifices for it. Um, but again, I'm still not seeing it. Somebody <laughs> else is somebody else is seeing it. You know what I mean? I'm still thinking like, dude, why? I, like, I want to be doing. I want to be a kid. You know what I mean? Somebody else is seeing it. Somebody else is fucking dragging it along, and I'm just like on for the ride. Like, man. But in that moment, like when you were going through this, you didn't think about it like that. You were just living your day to day life. Basketball practices today. Let's go to basketball. It wasn't. I'm trying to go play college NBA, right? No, it was like, they're telling me this is what I need to do. So I got to go do that, I guess. Yeah. Just like that, I guess. That's crazy. This is what I have to go do, I guess. Oh, we got to go work out. Damn, I guess we got to go work out. You know what I mean? Like, if it, I wish it would have been like that because it would be a different, it would have been a different grind. I'm doing this because somebody's telling me to. I'm not doing this because I want to do it. Yep. That's a different grind. That's a different mentality. You're playing different. If you're in a mode like, Oh, I'm trying to eat this dude's face off because yeah. this is what it is. This is more or less, oh, somebody told me I'm good, so I guess I got to go be good. But so you know the guess. difference like, between doing something you love, you're passionate about, you'll do whatever it takes. Get up 4 a.m., cool, I'll get up at 3.30. Like, it just means something different to you, but that that wasn't the case. I wasn't, I wasn't it at the time. It, it wasn't it at the time. And then uh, so I, I go there, I'm playing. Um, I got, got grounded a couple times, and I'm just like, "What? I've never been grounded before. What is going on?" I call my grandmother. I'm like, "I'm ready to come home. Like, this is crazy. I got grounded because I got, I got a, 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 I think I could only have more than one C. I could only have one C, and I, I had, um, a D in Spanish." because it was the first week of school and I didn't turn something in. Oh my so I had a D, right? So oh, yeah. I got grounded. And I'm like, yo, it's the only grade. Like, I forgot to turn it in, blah, 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 blah. It's the only grade. Why, why am I getting that? grounded? And uh, so they grounded me, took my phone, took my took my cars. I can only, I can only drive to school and back. I was in. I'm just like, oh, this sucks. So I had a burner phone, though, that my grandma had given me. I had a burner phone. So I call her up. I'm like, yo, I'm ready to come home. Like, this ain't for me. And uh, this was the first pinnacle of my life that really changed. I heard it in her voice. And she was like, you can tell that she missed me, right? You know what I mean? She's like, do you really want to go? Do you really want to come home? And I could tell that it was no longer her going to talk me out of it. It was like, I'm going to let you come home. And it was like, that was like the first point where I feel like, nah, I want to do this. I want to do it. So you, did you, you knew somewhere deep down that it was, it was good for you, whether or not, whether it may not be for just basketball, but just good for your life. Life general. Like I'm, I'm living with a you know, millionaire. Yeah. This, 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 just living like this, I'm going to get something from it. You know what I mean? This is something I have. I can't even fathom living. I'm living in a mansion, dude. I can't, I, bro, we had to share about, I, I, I freaking shower with my cousin until I was like 10. You know what I mean? We have one bathroom, like, you know, this thing was just so big and the freaking just precious. And I was just like, this is how I live. You know what I mean? This is, this is, I could see myself living like this. Now I'm watching it. I have the blueprint right here. And this was like, as a young kid, this is like me putting it all, all the pieces together now. Like, oh, I see what's going on. I see what I got to do. Wow. Um, and then from that point, it was just like, 3.1 GPA, playing basketball, starting football. Now I'm all state football, going into basketball, all state basketball, McDonald's All American. And now it's like traction is picking up. I'm going to AU, I'm killing, I'm playing up now. And I'm playing with like dudes that are older than me. And now I got like all any team that I ever could imagine is calling and like we're having to take phone calls. Now it's like a fucking movie. Now it's like, oh, this is what they're talking about. And, uh, we just to the last tournament in Kentucky had called us. It was like, we want you to come take a visit. And I was just like, shit. All right. Coach, coach Cal came to a football game and watched me not, not some dudes block off on a block and was like, what the hell? You know what I mean? Like, this is, a, this is a kid that we're recruiting, like this football player, blah, blah, blah. So I, after that, bro, I didn't look back, man. It was just, just how I want to live. Wow. 
And so was it, was it still, was it more fun at this point at this point or the same or like now that basketball was a future for you, were you doing the little things that now you didn't do before? Well, no, not yet. Cause I was still playing football at the time. So I played football uh, until the end of my senior year. Um, and so, and I was getting calls for both football and basketball. So like, I'm still kind of like, I know I'm going to go play college basketball, but I might fuck around and play both at, at a college. All right. When I went to take my visit for, um, at Alabama, I was like, shoot, I'll walk on to their team. Shoot. You know what I mean? They're already good. Like basketball teams, not that good. So I've seen people that play both. Shoot, I think I'll go play both if I go here. And so that was one of my last five schools that I went on, like a visit on. And I knew a a, a guy uh, named Trevor Relaford. He was their point guard. So he was from the same city. And we was like working out together um, with a dude named Eric Stance. And so that was kind of my connection with them. I'm like, shoot, I might go play with him. And uh, then I took a trip to Kentucky the week after. And it was just like, why would I not come here? You gotta be stupid not to come here. But what was it about it that that made you feel that way? Well, because I was a, a four-star recruit, so there. I mean, if people knew me, it's because they're like really deep into this recruiting process. Because I was like everybody else, five stars. Everybody else, top five in their class. I'm I'm 42 at the time. Which isn't bad, you know what I mean? But compared to these kids, you know, number one, number two players in the class, like, it was, everybody knew who the hell they were. Yep. I mean, they were famous already. Yep. And I'm just, I'm just, you know, catching up of, I didn't have these, I didn't have, I didn't play this sport my whole life, you know what I mean? Like, I just became a basketball player uh, because he told me to, <laughs> not, not because I wanted to, you know what yeah, I mean? Sure. This dude, That's this a reality. Told me to do it. Yeah. And so... I, I, I get there and I'm kind of walking behind everybody because I'm like, dude, I don't know how to, I don't know how to act. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm kind of walking behind everybody and just like soaking it all in. And I'm seeing all these fans just like yelling at, you know, Shabazz Muhammad was there. Alex Poitras was there, you know, just Nerlens Noel, Archie Goodwin. They're all like, they're all, we're all, it's big boom madness. So like every recruit comes in for this and like, I'm just like hearing these guys go crazy. And it was the one one person that was like, yo, that's Willie Colley. That's Willie Colley. I wasn't Willie Colley Stein at the at the time yet. That's Willie Colley. And I was just like, man, this dude knows me. Holy shit. And then like they start Big Boo Madness. So there's there's 20, 24,000 people at this practice. So it's crazy in there. It's going yeah, nuts. It's happening. Yeah, it's going nuts. And what sold it for me is about like seven eight guys in college that are now in the league walk up on the stage and the fucking fans are going nuts. John Wall was there, Boogie Cousins was there, um, Tyshawn Prince was there. Like, and these are just some, some of the guys I remember. You had some and, and I was just like, bro, we got chills just sitting there. I'm just like, bro, this is. This is and then the coach was like, "This is every night. This isn't just this practice. Like this is every night. You think they just showed up for this for a practice? You should have seen them camping out two weeks ago to get tickets to come to this practice." I'm like, well, "This is nutty." So, because one of my three things was I wanted to play with a bunch of fans, and I wanted it to be like, you know, a good because they had told me like, you know, you're gonna come here, and you're gonna play against the best kids in the nation, and it's gonna be a step like. Wow, we basically mirror our whole thing to the NBA. So you're getting an NBA experience before you get a chance to even get an NBA. Mm. Matter of fact, if you come here, you're automatically going to be a top pick. And I'm sitting in my, my living room like, yeah, okay. Uh, sound, you know, sounds good. I got there and I quickly realized, damn, you're literally going to be a top pick. When I signed, I was literally a top 15 pick without even playing a game. Really? Overnight. Like 2,000 followers in – a night I wake up and I'm like, I had probably 50 followers. You know what I mean? <laughs> Over that, I'm like, it was not just even, basically not even a freshman yet. No, I'm still in high school. Boom, 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 boom. It's just like, now it's just downhill, like a snowball effect. Just like, sign. 
finish out my high school football career, play basketball, and then I'm on the way. And that's that's like another, you know, once I get there, that's when it that's when it finally after my first after my freshman year, like going into my sophomore year is when it like now I'm now now I'm starting to do the little things, working out at one a.m. I see it now. I was behind, so now I'm trying to catch up. Mm. Mm. And then, so I started just working OD, and by the time junior year, dude, I was one of the best in the country. From, from but I had a vision in. Yeah, well, now you do, but before yeah. there wasn't one. No, it was somebody else's vision, somebody else's dream. Okay, well, we, we can stand this. How important do you think it is now? Now that you you've lived a life with without a dream somebody else's dream. And now you finally were at the point where you had something you were really, really going for. Like how important is it for people to, to find something that they truly are passionate about? Oh, dude. I mean, it's everything. Otherwise it's point it's, it's, it's pointless motion. You know what I mean? Like I wasted so many hours of practice that if I was, if I had a goal, you know, my goal at the time was just to get it over with because I'm trying to get back to what I was doing. I'm trying to go be a kid, but like now when I look back at it, I'm like, dude, I could have went so much harder. <laughs> it wasn't easy, you know what I mean? And I could have went harder. I could have, I could have really, I could have been way better than what I ended up being. I was good, but I could have been a great high school player at football and basketball. Um, and it was just like now when I look back at it, there's like I just had, I just talked to Coach Cal the other day. He sent me a picture of me dunking on the kid um, from Florida. And I guess it was like getting auctioned off or something. It's a big old poster. And I was just like, dude, if I knew what I knew now, then I would give up all the money I have in my bank account to go back and redo that shit. Because it was literally the best time of my life. It was just like, I was like, I'm, I know for real, I would give it all up to go back and relive it all over again and change the little things. Okay, then what would you tell the young Willie Cully right now, if you could? Oh, man. Listen to Kenny Payne. Like, actually listen to Kenny Payne. Like, I was listening, but I was trying to finesse what he was saying. Like, I, I always had this, like, thing, like, I'm going to get there, but I'm going to do it my way. I had it in, I had it with school. Like, I'm going to get the grade, but I'm going to do it my way. I'm about to sit here and study, blah, 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 blah. But I'm going to get it done, but I'm going to do it my way. I wish I would have just got it done and not try to do it my way. So, like, for for me, I would I would go back and tell them just, like, listen and really put it into your soul of what this guy's telling you. Because, like, at the time it didn't hit, but... As soon as I got in the league, as soon as I've, you know, been in the league a few years, now it's like, oh, man, that dude told me this was going to happen. You know what I mean? I didn't believe it. Or I, I believed it, but I didn't – I did, I thought I could do it my way. And, like, it, it didn't end up working like that. Um, <clears throat> what do you think uh, the biggest lessons you learned going from high school to college ball was? Um – confidence like coming from where I come from being behind the curve I mean like my wife now is mom used to like just pump so much confidence and she's like like you don't think you're like this now but like you're gonna outdo them kids like eventually you're gonna be up other kids eventually and I was just like what you played against this kid like Alex Poitras in a pickup game, bro. It's just like, we either found him or he's dunking on us. Like, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to be better than him. Like, I don't know how I'm going to be better than, you know, these other guys. And, like, sure as shit, dude. By the junior year, I'm defensive player of the year. I'm All-American. You know, <laughs> about to be a sixth pick. You know what I mean? I was just like, I look back at it now. I'm just like, what? Like, I can't even believe from what I thought I was to like what I ended up being because of the confidence that she instilled in me to like, I remember like when I first started hanging out with my wife now in high school and then like, like her mom was just like, so she was just such a savage with basketball, bro. Like just pumping in just like, 
I had a conversation with her the next day. I don't even know what she told me. Like now, I just yeah, I just say I would just say it's confidence based. Next next game, I had forty two career high, in high school forty two. Just like, bro, what? And then yeah, I get to college. And I just remember going in, like right before I left. She was just like, she's like, you just gotta be a dog. Like go there and just be a dog. And like, you you're better than them. You're better than them. And I'm just like, shit, all right. And yeah, I mean, slowly. It started kicking where I seen it. Like I played it you know, once I started practice with them and like, you know, got a couple of dunks, got a couple of buckets on. And then I started realizing like, oh, these these guys are just guys like me. They're just kids like me. Yeah. That's it. And then just like picked up from there. And, but like confidence, man. That was like the biggest thing. I feel like the biggest thing for kids now is just confidence, playing with confidence, especially when you get to this level, man. Like, you got to have it or, or you're not going to make it to this level. How do you think you got to, you know, to that point, you know, where, where did you find your confidence? Oh man, just trial and error. Um, like once I got to college, um, like high school, I had confidence. It was a different confidence. You know what I mean? Like I knew I was the best player in that region, whatever. But like, you know, when you go to a step up, now everybody's the best player in their region. So, like, how are you going to weed out who's the best player out of these guys? And, like, it starts with the little things, man. Like, coming from where I came from, man, like, I love just being outside, like, going to parties and, like, being a college kid. So there was, like, a, a you know what I mean? Like, I'm going, I'm, I came to college. So a lot of them guys are coming to college for one year because they got their, their eyes set on this, the league. You know what I mean? I'm like, bro, I'm coming to college to be in college. <laughs> so, like, I'm going to football games. I'm going to functions. I'm going to, like, I'm doing all this other stuff. So that's why I stayed there for so long, man. It's like it never mentally I never got to the point where, like, oh, I'm ready to let this go and I'm ready to, like, career basketball. You, I know once I leave here. here yeah. I know once I leave here, it's career basketball. This ain't funsy basketball, playing for pride anymore. You know what I mean? Like, it's just playing for livelihood. Um, and I didn't get to that, that mental point until after my sophomore year when we lost in the championship and I broke my ankle. That rehab spot, that's when all of that came into my mind. Like, so like, I literally changed my whole outlook on life, just thought process. It was like, I want to, this is like, this is the year. I remember laying in my uh, the hospital bed talking to my uh, my cousin Rex. Facetime. I just got out of surgery, and I'm just like, at this time, I I could I could I'm still deciding whether I want to go to the pro or not. Like, mm-hmm. I wake up, I'm freaking on morphine trip, and I'm just like, bro, I think I'm gonna come back. So I got some I got some shit I want to do. Like I want to win some accolades. I wanna I wanna I wanna go back to the final four. I want to do this. And I just said it, bro, but I, I don't even – I guess it, just saying it, you know what I mean, putting it out there. It all happened, bro. It all happened. Tenfold, it all happened. 38-1, and one, Final Four appearance, Defensive Player of the Year, freaking All-American, freaking SEC Player of the Year. You know, just like – just all, like, SEC MVP, turn, tournament MVP, like all these accolades that I, like, you know, told them that, I, that this is what I wanted to do. And like, It probably became personal. I just the work became personal because now I'm like I want it now you know what I mean so now just like the work the intent to work was just different than the previous year like it was like I, I'm working for a purpose now I'm not just working because somebody told me to like I'm working because I want to do this I want to I want to end up I want like I want to set myself up to to you know make as much money as fast as I can and end up being the sixth pick and it was just like Wow. Couldn't have told senior year Willie Colley that Willie Colley Stein was going to be the sixth pick. What was that day like? It wasn't like what you think, man. It was like, this isn't the end. So there was no, you know what I mean? I'm already looking. I didn't even bask in it, dude. It was just like, I still haven't even hit a, a, a lick of what my basketball talent was you know what i mean it's still today like still is and i was just like 
So I was already looking like, bro, I don't want to be just a defensive player, what they put me as. Like, I got so much more to my game. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to become one of the guys that's got, got it both. And so when I get to sack, I'm, like, working with Paige. I'm working with Drake on just shooting, 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 offense, offense. Defense was already there. So it was just, like, I'm trying to catch up the offensive side of things now. And uh, bro, just, uh, you know politics in the league guy that's when it becomes that's when it became like all right i accomplished the dream of getting here but like now there's other forces that are going to go against your dream and this is either going to make you better or you're going to quit so then how'd you battle them Shoot, man, I just haven't quit. <laughs> I just haven't quit. I still believe, you know what I mean? I'm still chasing it. I just still believe that I, I have so much more to give. I made some mistakes, man. So now it's just like getting a back a good foundation to like give it another push. Um, and just like being consistent, working consistent. Um, you know what I mean? Like I quit drinking, I quit smoking, I quit partying, I quit. Like now I got a daughter, I'm about to have, you know, twin boys. So now the foundation is different yep. than it was five years ago. Yep. So now the foundation is solid. It's like at the end of the day, if I never play basketball again, this right here that I have is like better than what basketball could ever give me. However, I'm not playing basketball for me anymore. Like I'm playing for their foundation and the dreams that they're gonna have. And like being able to be you know the will shield to them like i want to give you guys what he gave me in the mold of a blueprint of you want to live like how we're living but for your foundation this is how you're going to do it now i have a whole freaking blueprint of like how to do it and i did it the hard way i know the easier way but i did it the hard way and so now it's just like i don't know having a kid and like having kids like it changes it all because now you're just like the dream is bigger it's like their dream now i'm trying to like dream their dream you know what i mean whatever it is with, with sports or whatever is your drive bigger now that you're playing for something you know bigger than than yourself oh yeah no it is definitely it's definitely bigger. it becomes not a it's not a burden anymore it's like belief in if i do these things these things are going to happen. I don't know when they're going to happen. Nobody does, but I just can't be doing these things and nothing happen. It's just not how it works. You know what I mean? The only way it doesn't work is if you're not doing them with a full intent of why you're doing them. Yeah. Yeah. If you're doing them and like you're still drinking and you're partying on the side. Well, eventually, dude, you're not going to, you're not living right. So you're not about to do what you think you're going to do because you're just not living right. You're not putting the energy in in the right spot. So I had to go back, you know what I mean? Go back to a, a certain primal instinct in myself of like, all right, yeah, you're a millionaire, but you want to be a 10 millionaire? You want to be a 20 millionaire? You want to be a hundred millionaire? You never want to worry about money again? This is what we're going to have to do. That's what we're doing now. What does success look like to you? It's many forms of success, man. It's like, that's a hard question because, like, I'm already there, but, like, that's society's success. You know what I mean? When you guys like us, we're in a, like, when you're in a, you're, like, a professional athlete, you've already made it in the society's eyes. You, they think you're freaking untouchable with money. It's not true. It's, <laughs> it's not true at all. There's still... Uh, at this level, uh, a million dollars goes by quick, especially when you have kids, especially mm -hmm. when you have families to take care of. Like, it goes by quick. So, bro, like, a million dollars isn't what – that's what I used to want to play for is a million dollars. Yeah. And I got it. I'm like, a million dollars ain't shit. Like, I need, like, $50 million. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know I, mean? like I, need, I, need, yeah, I need way more than this, like, the lifestyle that I want. Now, the lifestyle that I dream now, one I'm chasing now, bro, I need 
way more to just like sustain that. Yeah. And uh, so that's like the drive now. It's like I just I, I want a hundred times better lifestyle than I had growing up for my kids. Um, and I don't want to even think about money again. So like, how much money does it take to not think about money again? That's a personal opinion, but however you want to live, you know what I mean? Willie at his best, both on the court, off the court, you know, what does that look like? I think you're looking at it right now. I think I'm the best I've ever been off the court. Absolutely. I've been sober for nine months, bro. My mind's never been clear. Um, on the court, I, have, I haven't played in nine months, so I don't know. Um, but, like, when I work out and I, like, I mean, it's just I feel sharper. I feel better. So it's, like, I, I, I feel like I've done so much work in the last nine months um, off the court um, that once I touch on the court again, it's just going to, like, turn into something that I always dreamed of. Like, this is finally – you finally did the work of what you were supposed to do a long time ago. So, like, now is, like, I'm so excited, like, play again because I'm, like, I want to see if this – for tuition. You know what I mean? Like, the shit that everybody in my life ever said is going to happen. Because it's, like, I don't know what else I could do. It, sometimes, it, I, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out like that, though. But, like, I just – I'm a firm believer, and you can't just put in a bunch of work and do all the right things and not nothing of the right things happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it sounds like you're at a point where, regardless of the outcome – you can at least be be proud of what you put in. Absolutely, because I, I I left no stone stone unturned. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm putting it all, putting it all in, putting it all out there. So like, like I said about the foundation, the foundation is nice now. So like, if I never touch it again, my foundation is solid. Where that's the success. Like I've succeeded enough to have this foundation that I could fall off and live for the rest of my life and have no regrets. Now that you say like you're at your best, you're in, you know, you're feeling like you're in your prime. What's what's your day to day routine, you know, looking like right now? Shoot, man, I, I get up about eight. Um, get my daughter a bottle. <laughs> um, you know, go let out the dogs real quick before I leave. Go work out. Um, you know, do strength and conditioning. Um, a little rehab on the feet and uh right after the work is done it's just I've, I've gone to golf i think it's it's helped my like um recovery like with you know drugs and alcohol just like recovery like, something that like to throw myself into that's not basketball to get like burnt out to that mm. and so like man i just started golf like five six months ago so i just uh, just play a lot of golf now so I go work out, get my basketball in, and then I start crapping on the golf course. And what about? Because this is only stuff like that I've read, but there's a there's a life outside of basketball for you, and you know you're you're an artist. Where where'd that passion come from? <sighs> Man, my grandmother, like fourth grade, dude, put me in like this this woman that was in water aerobics with her. She was like a she teach like art she did art lessons so did my friends, water aerobics with grandmas no my my grandmother went to water aerobics and she had a friend there okay and she was like she teaches art and i was like you know i always been into like art um and so she's like yeah you know gave me a little sketch pad some pastels some old pastels and i, and I went to her house like once a week it was just like crafting on art and then got to like junior high, took art classes from junior high all the way to college. And like, it was just like one of them things, man. I always wanted to be like a sneaker designer or a clothing designer. Um, so that's like the kind of foundation of art. And I didn't start painting till like three or four years ago. Mm. And then once I started painting, it was like another, I like painting more than, I don't even want to do it like, shoe design <laughs> i mean like just paintings this painting is crazy um so i started painting um and then there's always like backlash with it though because like 
you know, you read that, you're like, oh, so we hear your artists. Well, all them, all the 30 freaking teams that read it too, they're like, well, are you artists or are you a basketball player? Do you, you know, do you take art more than basketball? But I'm like, see, y'all are wicked. Y'all don't get it. That's just basketball is art. Hate. But you know what I mean? Like, basketball is a craft. This is art. So I'm not an artist of a painter. I can paint. I'm an artist of life, dude. Like, the way my lens of life is an art. Like, everything is a craft. Everything that you have to do on a daily basis is a craft. Everything is an art. Like, so I'm like, basketball is just one art that I've crafted and became really good at. Um, there's so many other crafts along your life that you got to get good at. Um, and that's the way I kind of, I mean, that's the way I mean, bro, living life is an art. So that's how I break it down. I'm just like, so when I have conversations with them guys that are like asking me these questions to be on their team, I'm just like, bro, I, I throw that shit at them. Like, bro, living is an art, man. Like basketball is a, and they just like, fucking mind blows. Like, oh, yeah, but it's not, it's not who we thought he was. Right? We didn't think he was like this. Blah, 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 blah. Like I hear it all the time, bro. And it's just, <laughs> it's, a mo- it's a mockery. Like really, it's like, Cause then it's it's that's that's towards me. Oh, we hear you're a fashion guy. I ain't never been to one fashion show. Matter of fact, <laughs> I might have been so one fashion show my whole life was sack. I got invited to this freaking fashion show to walk in walk in a fashion show for this up and coming guy that makes suits. Okay, I went. Uh, rookie year. I ain't been to a fa- I ain't never been to a big fashion show. This is a Sacramento's fashion week. You know what I mean? Like I ain't never been to a big fashion show. And then I, I, I look on Instagram and we got guys that you guys paid 100, 120, 80, just a stupid amounts of money wearing dresses on freaking the biggest stages of fashion week. But I'm the fashion guy. So I'm looking at this. I'm like, so this is just like painted towards me so that y'all don't have to pay me. This is an, just one excuse like, oh, well, you like fashion more than you like basketball. So we can't we, we can't give you we can't give you what your basketball is worth. Oh, we think you're worth a hundred million, but we're scared when we once we give you a hundred million, you're not gonna like this anymore. Who the fuck wouldn't like playing this shit if you're getting paid a hundred million dollars? You know what I mean? Like, what do you mean? This is all I want. This is all I will do if I'm getting paid this. Like, you know what I mean? There's a there's a pride aspect at that point. Like, fuck, man, what, what do you mean? This is. Does all that chat kind of kind of fuel you now to I don't know almost prove them wrong? They're like, yeah, I am an artist, but I'm also a ball, like a baller, and I can do both, and I'll show you I can do both. Absolutely. Matter of fact, one feels the other. When I, bro, the best, the best, the best uh, season that I had so far was the, the season that I painted the most. Because all the negative shit, all the negative energy that I had was going into these paintings, and I would paint for like 13 hours straight. Wow. And like, wake up the next day, go practice, but like feel good or go play a game. And like, just like, I had the most 20 points games I ever had that season. Like, it was just like, I had the craziest season. And then like, I don't know, you know, some bad management on on my part, like being with a bad agency and and mixed with, you know, (laughs) you know, I mean, I don't even want to, say that they're bad because they're they're a freaking protein but like everybody knows that their organization isn't the best but i thought it was i didn't know anything else the sacramento dude this is i wanted to be there for the rest of my career no 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 bullshit i love sac that much was like bro, i want to be your guy for the rest of the time bro this is because the speed of sacramento was perfect for me it wasn't a big city i couldn't get in a lot of trouble i couldn't get into things that like if i was in la who knows what the if I was in Miami, who knows what New York, who knows what Sacramento? I was like being back in Dodge City, bro. It was farmers market, the river. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, just like country shit. That's where I felt comfortable. Yeah, and, like, and the people were just amazing, bro. It remind me of being back in the Southwest. So like, bro, it hurt the hell out of me when I didn't when they didn't extend me and I had to like basically bro it was an ego check for me too now that i look look back at it it was like man i, I let i let my ego get in the way of a situation that i thought was gold um because of what my agency was telling me and what other people around me was telling me it was like i didn't really i wasn't really educated on the politics of the league mm-hmm. and so i just let a bunch of egos 
like kind of changed the course of my my life but but that's like part of it you know what i mean that's like now it's different i know better now i know it's different like yeah, maybe better for it big yeah. part of life is i mean failing and whether that's on your part or other people's part it's it's all lessons learned and that's the only way you you get better and grow yeah absolutely dude. so now that you've been on a you know a few nba teams you played powerhouse kentucky what separates you know good teams from great teams oh man chemistry is a big one like our chemistry that we had my 2015 year was off the charts bro i've never been with a group of guys like that um and at the best of when I, in my King stint, our chemistry was crazy, bro. That's why we, that's why it was like, that's why we play. I, like everybody had fun, bro. We were rocking, bro. The, the West was scared to play against us because of how fast we were and how like young we were. And like these steps were happening where like, damn, these kids could be freaking eight, eighth in the West, seventh in the West, like. I didn't know, like, you know what I mean? Like, we were making noise, man. And, uh, you know, some things change. And people get switched out, and now the chemistry's off. Now now, the, now, now it's bad blood between the, the the people that run the team and the people that are playing the games. So I feel like that's a big part of the great teams. Everybody's on the same page. The front office, the coaches, the players, everybody's in the same circle. Everybody's got the same goal, and everybody's – sometimes – the like front office don't meet what the coaches are saying, and that don't translate to us, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like the, the front office could not even want you to win because they want this pick in two years from now. Or, like, there's just so many little things in politics to this game that, like, as a player, you don't even know. You don't know until it's too late. So then it's like the, the teams that are great, they've got their guys. They've crafted their guys. They got young dudes that they want to mash, mesh with these guys. So, like, it's just a bunch of, you know, years of, of work and there's a stability about it that like, well, we're going to keep these older guys happy when these young guys got to get this playing time. And like, there's just like a bunch of different things that, that go on to make a great team, a great team. And that's what you see is every time is chemistry. That's why the Warriors are, so, why do you think the Warriors, they're, they're freaking core, like best friends. You know what I mean? They're, they're cores. One of the most probably if not one of the best cores in history of basketball of people that actually like each other that is like every day I mean, you work these guys every day for six months if you don't like that guy that's gonna be miserable you're gonna hate it you're gonna hate going to work because you're gonna end up being with somebody that you think's an asshole or something and like it's just taxing on your energy because now you're coming home talking about this guy instead of like talk about how great this guy is or like what no, this dude did this today like that's why our sacramento team it was like me harry giles fox and my shumper ben uh ben mclemore <laughs> like bro we all hang out bro we all hung out we all did things like harry was my neighbor like one house down bro she was always at my house after the game she's always i was always at his house we were always chilling outside like and it was like this camaraderie about it that that's that's why we were dangerous teams because like we cared for one another and like those teams actually care for you know the other players well-being of like this guy we want to get him paid so right, we're gonna give you the ball we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna let you do things we're gonna like help you out off the court you know what i mean like shit like that we really care if this guy is like i know i'm gonna get paid but i want my young guy to get paid with me and I had to play like, good bets though. Like, you know, I had Matt Barnes, I had Zebo, I had Cron Butler, I had Quincy AC, like <laughs> Rudy Gay, man, Rajon Rondo, Collison, like freaking um Ty Lawson, bro. I had these dudes that were like quote unquote misfits, but they were like fucking great, man. You can't say you can't talk about basketball and not talk about those guys in basketball, you know. Like, so I had these vets teaching me how to be a vet when that time came. And like, so I, when I took Harry Giles on my win, I'm telling them the truth about, this, about what this league is. Not like, hey man, if you do this, this, and this, you're, you're going to get paid. Nah, man, you could do this, this, and this, and they still might not pay you, bro. It might not be four teams from now until you get paid. Shit, it might not be seven years from now until you get paid. And that's like, 
what uh my shoot two years ago with uh the Mavs with James Johnson. I still ain't I still ain't got that big check that people dream of when you when you when you dream about coming to the NBA, you dream about getting that that big ass check that's gonna change your life. But I still ain't got that. And I used to dwell on it until I met James Johnson. And he was like, Bro, <laughs> I was in the league for eight years before I got my first 40 mil. I was just like, Damn. I'm coming up on eight years, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. Hold up, wait a second. Okay, hold on. Let me shift my let me shift my energy real quick because I'm thinking it's almost over, and his shit didn't pick up. He ends up playing, you know, 17 years of the league. So his last eight years, it'll do maybe 100 mil. Perspective on it, you know. Absolutely, like, and you got to think about what what the first eight years can teach you about. The what the second yeah what the second right. can do Everything. you know it's like yeah. you, you can't always think about the outcome and i think something that we've i've had a lot of discussions on, on on the show about is is trust in the process being in love with the process and not focusing on the outcome absolutely bro and yeah. one of the best things that i heard from you know my my, my boy rex had uh passed away um this is about the journey, kid. Like, bro, it's about the journey, bro. And the end is going to be the end, but bro, it's about the journey. And like, literally, some days I really have to wake up and think about that. It's about the journey. And then I look back at the journey and I'm just like, the journey's been great. You know what I mean? Like, the journey's been great. Just talking about it to you today, but I haven't talked about the story for so long. Like, bro, it was, bro, it was greatness. Like, what am I talking about, bro? It's just greatness. Isn't it funny how sometimes, like, it takes you to it all, you almost have to remove yourself from today or the reality to almost a moment it. yeah every moment for sure over. you do bro because like like i said bro just saying like just talking about it out loud you, you know it's been so internal for so long you just talk about like bro i literally came from a town of 800 people and i'm living in a 10,000 square foot mansion Dude, your life is literally cut from the blind side, like part of that movie, and then part of the the movie we just talked about with Adam Sandler. Just like yeah. nothing from from something incredible. Yeah, no, that's cool. That is really diamond cool. out of a wheat field, man. Diamond out of a wheat field, bro. That's just that's just real. Let me ask you something. Who's who's the best teammate you've ever had? Oh, that's tough. It's not, and you can take away just basketball. I'm just talking yeah. teammate, you know, your, your dog. Well, I, I, I mean, maybe I don't have some, name, just describe him. No, I mean, I, I'd say names, bro. I don't care. Uh, I've had some really, uh, I just started with that, bro. I have some really dope teammates, but I will say, like, the best, there's no best, but the guys that I got the closest with, that's a different conversation. You know what I mean? That's like, that's how I would describe the best for me is I ha- I've had a lot of dope teammates, man. Like all good people, you know, have their own thing. But the guys that I got closest to that I like go to their weddings, I go to their funerals. God forbid if they die before me, like shit like that, like little milestones of their life that I would want to be a part of. Harry Giles, Jordan Poole, James Johnson. Um, Finney Smith from the Mavs, uh, Trey Burks from the Mavs, um, like, I'm trying to think on, uh, Ben McNamara, mm. yeah, that was one of my first guys coming into the league, Emo, Emo, um, Eric Moreland, that's another guy that was with the Kings, he kind of took me under his wing as a young guy of what he's seen his his first year so like you know those are those are just a handful of guys that are off the top of my head and there's probably more dude but like those guys right there like i got a lot of love for this guy what do you want willie to be remember as bro what i always what i what i'll be remember as right now bro. any of those guys you at bro it's just he's trill man he's it's trill bro it's trill like and even with Parker, bro, you guys, Parker, you guys, any of these guys, it's just like, bro, there's nothing that could, like, take me out of my element. It, it would, there would have to be some crazy shit to go down and take me out of, like, this. 
dislike the meaning of this calmness. It's like, it was a lot, like a lot of soul, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I'm an old soul, man. So like, it's just, it's just jiggy, bro. That's it's literally the only word I just jiggy, bro. Like, that's a jiggy dude right there, bro. Like, there's not a lot somebody can say to get him out of his shit, bro. He he knows what he is, and that's what it's gonna be. And what what gets you out of bed every morning? It's fine. Shit, man, my, my, my kids, man, my daughter, my unborn sons, man, like, my daughter for sure, bro, she's, 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 she's cold, bro, she, she's, she's, she's definitely, man. How old is she? There. She's two. She's young. And then you got twins. Yeah. Man. Yeah, two boys. You better have your hands so full, bro. Yeah, bro, but it's, but there ain't nothing like it, man. Okay. Yeah, there really ain't nothing like it, bro. That's the best thing that can ever happen to me, bro. Uh, I only got a couple more. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but you know, you're going to a new team. Um, like, what mentality right now going into a new organization? Nine months with you know off of basketball. You know, where's your head at, and uh, you know, what do you want to prove? Man, it's just a a, a work mentality. Um, you know, I've already X'd out a lot of the distractions of what could be as a professional athlete. So like, I don't even have to think about that anymore. It's more or less like, man, I'm here to work. I'm here to prove that I got a lot, you know, left to this game right. and I can help, I can help a winning team win. Um, and so like going into this situation is just proving that I am who I say I am, who I've said I am for a long time. Um like a hard worker um, you know i've had a knock on my name of not not being a hard worker and i was i was but i don't get to where i'm at if i'm not a hard worker bro like i came from nothing literally came from freaking wheat fields dude like i don't get here if i didn't work on it you know what i mean now could you have worked harder always it doesn't matter how hard you go yeah. you, you still can work hard so um for me it's just like consistency you know what i mean consistency bro on the days that you don't want to get up you get up and you go do it so like that's that's my mentality now and so going into that situation now being a bottom tier guy from the g week and having to try to work back into a starting rotation that's the that's what 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 are the goals and what are the things i got to do from the organization to, to like meet my you know notion of what I want. How do how do we make it happen? And if you can't make it happen, hopefully you've set me up in a position where it can happen with this team or this team or, you know, and down the list from there. So it's just like a kind of rebranding myself. Man, I love that. And I mean, it's a, it, it's a, it's a new beginning for you. And it's definitely one that, that I'm so excited to, to be able to witness. And the cool thing is I'll be able to witness a lot of it in person here in Houston. Oh yeah, dude. Uh, when I get down there, man, we gotta link up or something. We'll link up. Uh, yeah, show you around Houston. It's it's cool. We'll get you out to a rugby game as well. Hey man, I ain't never been to a rugby game. That'd be tough. It'll be sweet. Houston's sick. I love I love how how big the the sport culture is here. Yeah, it's huge. Texas, period. Uh, but you got the rugby. Texas- you got the Astros, you got the Dynamo Dash. Now there's a rugby team. I mean, and the Texans, like it's just it's a good vibe. Right. You got every every aspect of like, you know, summer, fall, spring, like there's always something going on. So every, that's tough. And then the Texas rodeo is the most insane thing you'll you'll oh, be bro. able to see. I love a rodeo, dude. One month long it. rodeo, dude. A month long. It's the biggest rodeo, bro, with a concert every single day. It's it's sick. Wow. No, that's a that's a that's a festival. That's not a that's that's yeah, that's crazy. Wow. I'm just I'm just geek when the PBR is in town. Like you know, I can imagine a whole that's month sick. rodeo. I went to the PBR in Sacramento once. Out that, that opened my eyes to to the sport. It's pretty cool. Well, I mean, I'm I would never do it. Absolutely not. Hell no, but I would want to be in the cage. You know what I mean? I want to be on that like 
the shoot. I want to be standing on top of the shoot watching it. Like that, I could that I would love nothing more than that, bro. Like just to see like the you seeing it on TV and seeing it from a, a stance doesn't do it just of what the fuck is really going on in that show. No, until one of those bulls jumps out of the freaking thing. And you've seen that happen. Yeah, that's true. Oh, but, that, that, that shit's wild. Yeah, no, that's bro. Yeah, no, I got my I, I, my my uh my daughter she loves like horses and animals and stuff like that so like when she was younger man we would take her to the rodeo here in the stockyards and like let her see you know, all the animals and so like at home we're watching a pbr and i got her little pbr like plastic little rubber bull thing and, like a big ass bouncy house it's a pbr bull like you know, we fuck the pbr over here oh dude you're gonna love the rodeo and the animal exhibit is so sick That's dope. Oh man, well, that, I mean, that that's everything I, I got here. Uh, I'm so grateful to have you on here and, and your, your story, your journey is number one, inspiring. Number two, it's extremely unique. Um, and what's what's so cool about getting guys like you and all these other athletes on, on the show is that no matter no matter the, the, the childhood, no matter the background, the family history, no dream is too big to chase. And I've, se- I've seen guys come from extremely wealthy families and get to the absolute top. I've seen yeah. guys come from absolutely nothing where their, you know, their childhood is filled with, there's violence, there's, there's, you know, they're, they're homeless yeah. Yeah. And, and they get to the top. And I'm not saying that one is easier or harder than the other, because one certainly is easier or harder than the other, but you still can you still can accomplish your goals and your dreams, um, regardless of where you come from. Definitely, bro. It's a, it's it's like what you know. We talk, it's the it's the the will, the will to to do it. You know what I mean? Like to do the daily things without thinking about the end goal. If I could do these things every day, five years from now, there's no way I'm, I'm there's no way I'm the same. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not it's not possible. No, it's, it's not. Be different. You know what I mean? You're going to be different. There's just no way you stay the same if you're doing these things every day. Yeah. You're going to be different. You're going to be better. And and that's one of the big messages I want to get across to not just young athletes, but just everybody in life. Like you got to, you got to just focus on things you can control today and, and trying to just win today. Mm-hmm. If that goal. Is day. Carpe diem, bro. Seize the day. Facts, but man, you're a dog. I appreciate you. Nah, man. All love, bro. Why we did it. That's good. I'm grabbing a photo of us, right? Got us. Well, uh, I would love to link when, when you get in Houston. I'm back. I got to fly to South Africa and then straight to Dubai, October 8th, and I'm back the 19th of November. That sounds like a good time. It's a, it's a, it's a rugby. Dude, we got to qualify for the World Cup. Oh, that's dope. So it's, it's a business trip. It's, uh, it's not a vacation. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, you're going to vacation spots, so dude, I I, I get paid to play. The vibes will be tough. All the world, it's right. I'm, it's I'm nothing living, better. <laughs> I'm living my dream. Absolutely, bro. All right, man. All right, man. You have a great night. Doing well. Appreciate yep, it very too. much. Yep. All right. Take care, man. Later, bro.